Fred. All right. And I'm also going to share my screen just so that way we can kind of work through this together and um, get things going. If I can figure out how to get rid of this. Cool. All right. So, so today, and first of all, just thank you for taking the time out of your day to sit down and, and look at a bunch of different experiments with me. I think it'll be pretty fun. It uh, looks like Jeff's joining too, so that's good. But really what the, um, what the ask was, was for the team to just come up with a bunch of ideas. Um, Phil and I were talking in a one-on-one, -on -one and he was like, what if we just come up with the smallest little ideas on the back of you know, that Ask Me Anything with um, Lynn, Lynn Shaw from, from Airbnb? And we thought, like, instead of working on these bigger workflows, which we love doing, and we're, we've seen some pretty good results, but there's like, a, there's like a bunch of little things that we could probably learn a bunch of stuff really, really fast if we were to, to kind of go down this path. So really the exercise here was just to, to jot down anything that comes to mind as it relates to um, inviting new users through the, through the platform or um, upgrading existing customers. Um, and, and really the crux of it is, is what is this, what are the ideas that we could ship within one to two weeks? Um, very quickly and then instrument and learn a bunch of stuff so that way we can use that to kind of drive additional work in the future um, and so this is kind of the first step uh, we we generated a list we've got over looks like we've got just about 30 ideas my goal is to get to 30 and we we did that we got a lot of input from the team so i'm grateful for that i know jackie and Mate, you all had a a pretty good um made some pretty good contributions here um, and th the list isn't done yet, but what I want to do today is actually just go through what we have and, and basically just do a feasibility review, um, and talk more about, okay, does this idea make sense for us as a group? And then if it does, is it something that's small enough that we can work on quickly? Um, and what I'm going to do is drop all of these experiments right into uh, this this sheet and then I'll get them organized. So for all of you who are on the call if you don't have this I linked it in zoom uh, Not in zoom. I linked it into uh, slack, but I'll drop it in zoom right now. So that way you all can have it um, if I can find The chat So hold on one second There we go There you go. So that way everybody has this and what I did was I wanted to do this so that way we could, we're going to use that issue as the single source of truth, but this will just make it easier for us to iterate on the call. Um, I feel like it'll make us more efficient um, as we do this. So I broke down into basically two focus areas, um, invite members and then um, upgrading customers. And then I have the idea, just copy and pasted right from the issue. We're going to focus on column C, which is feasibility. And we'll worry about the other stuff later. If we can, we'll talk about G. Um, just with some of the, um, I feel like we have a good, a, a good, like a good group on the phone with Doug and Mate to also talk about effort. So like if we were to do a handful of these, what is the actual effort associated to it? Um, so I figure we could just kick it off. What I'll do is I'll just, I'll voice over each idea. Um, and then let's just have. 15, 20 second conversation about it. We can take as much time as we want, but we do have about 30 of them. We only have an hour to kind of talk about hey, Tim, this. So that's can fun. I ask a quick clarifying question? Yep. At what point are you thinking we talk about um, metrics for a given experiment? Because I think like if we want to move quickly, choosing appropriate metrics is really important. It is. So the purpose of this one is just for us to identify the ideas that we want to then go further explore. Um, what I'm going to do after this, Jeff, is take all of these ideas and then go to work on is the data, is the data available? If it's not, how easily can we get it? And if we can, what do those success metrics look like? Um, so that's, okay. those are going to be my takeaways on the heels of this call. Uh, but right now, what I want to do is basically just push all of the ideas up that we think are good ones that we could execute on quickly. And then I'll go sort out the rest and hopefully I'll be able to burn it down by the end of 13.4. 
and then we can prioritize a list for 13.5, 13.6. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Cool. All right. So um, row two, um, we've got an idea that says basically link, uh, this one, uh, this is an idea that I jotted down and it's, it's basically around link placement for invite members. Um, I'm thinking that we could just simply add an invite members link throughout the UI and see which one gets the most clicks. What do you all think about that? Uh, link or button? It could be either. I either. I would see it. You say either as well. Yeah. Uh, we could add a button to empty state pages, uh, or we could add a, a button or a link to a project group overview page, stuff like that. Uh, these are high traffic pages. Maybe it gets some usage, right? Mm -hmm. um, how, so do you think this is pretty, how feasible is this? I think we could do it quickly. I think so. I mean, from my, my point of view, it could be done quickly. And now when, when we will have that model as well, right, where we possibly expand uh, the possibility of inviting users to non-owners, I think we could get some really good, good results with these experiments. One easy way to do this might be to add an option to that green drop down button where you have like new projects, new subgroup, a third option could just be invite member. And then you're not actually creating a new element on the page, you're just adding a new element to that list. I have an issue with that drop down as it is. It hides, uh, hides things. Um, it, it does, I won't argue with that, but in terms of getting something out quickly, yeah. yeah, cool. So this is something that we could explore, um, and I think we should we should continue to go down it. So, all right, let's move down to the next one. Um, next one is invite member copy. I was thinking that we could just use multiple variants of the invite members of of invite members. Um, add your friends, add team members, etc., and then just see which one gets the most clicks. I think there's a handful of places that we could do it in. Um, what are you thinking about this one? I think this one makes sense if combined with the first one, mm -hmm. particularly. Uh, we could be running, how, how many experiments can we run at the same time? If we can do five, 10 of them, we could run a couple of these combinations, different combinations, different combinations of copy and placement and see which one works well. I wouldn't, I would expect more from placement experimentation than copy experimentation, but I'm, I'm you know, let's allow ourselves to be surprised, I guess. Yeah, and who's to say we can't do both at the same time um, in different places? Uh, well, Jeff would probably yell at me for that. Well, I just want to say, like, that's where our metrics come into play. Yeah. Like, how many experiments we can run is entirely dictated by our conversion rates and our population sizes. And so, like, if we have something that has a 30% conversion rate, that's a lot easier to run multiple experiments compared to something that has a 2% conversion rate. Um, so it just, it all depends on like what your metrics is and how many people are going through a given experience and controls. So that's what I, what I'll do after this is I'll, I'll schedule a meeting, Jeff, I'll, I'll loop a, a good group together. I'll spin up an issue just talking about controls as it relates to these tiny, tiny experiments and how we would want to actually do that. Um, so that way we have a good framework before we kind of just do a bunch of work, but I, I just want to get the list, um, the list going. Um, so the third one, is it, were there any other ones on the second? Any other comments? No? Cool. All right. So the third idea was that um, we could just basically run an experiment on links or buttons. See which one gets the most clicks. I mean, I think that's kind of a cool study. Should be an easy one as well. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be some areas where a, a link it has to be a link or it has to be a button where one just doesn't fit as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, awesome. The other idea was, um, was coloration. Um, what, could we try multiple colors for our buttons and links? I'm not sure because, um, 
<laughs> I, I don't think we can try like a completely new color for a button, right? We have a design system uh, that we should use. Maybe we could experiment with either a blue primary button or a green one. I mean, you could experiment within the styles, but the problem is we use themes and dark mode and stuff like that and it has to work within the construct. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we can test a black and yellow button. <laughs> it's it's not in our in our color palette at all. <laughs> uh, system guidelines. Yeah, I uh, like Kristen Pados over at uh, Trip. She and I went back and forth on it a bunch of times because the uh, the book the book now button for them is just it's hideous, but it it's the one that people click the most. Like they, they tried all different kinds of colors and it went back to the bumblebee. Um, I just thought it was kind of cool, but it could be completely different for a completely different reason. Consumer buying behavior is probably different than um, DevOps usability. So um, I'm going to just say no. We'll just, we'll just call it no because it, it doesn't sound like it's a good fit. Um, it would take some, some overhead to actually have that conversation and and um, and and convince our our UX leadership to to allow us to basically go against the system that we've designed. Um, well, you can if you look at the palette. You can as long as you stay within the palette, you can change it. Still, so I guess we're not, I'm not saying that you can't. You just have to stay within the palette of colors we have. All right, I'm gonna say maybe, and then I'll pick it up later. Um, So the next idea was to allow reporters, developers, and maintainers to invite members to a project. Yeah, I just have a note here. My understanding is maintainers can already invite users to groups. Yeah, they, they probably can. I was just writing this down as quickly as I could. Okay. Um, really the, um, the crux of, or the, the essence of this one is how do we allow uh, users with lower permission, permissions to invite users. Yeah, and this is the one that we are currently working on, or at least I am, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of just wrapped it up today. I asked you and Phil to review it if you think it's ready. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll just show a model so that we don't have to go and build the whole thing of um, allow accepting invitations from that owner of the group. We just say, hey, this is not ready yet but we, we can measure how many people click it, right? Mm -hmm. Click that link. So this is basically already in the works, right? Yeah. Um, and I think the, um, what you've done on the front end has made it really interesting. And then in, just to see how, if people click on that. My yeah, and it, act it's actually, it actually helps because it makes it a bit more useful, right? Because at least we tell the new users, hey, you need someone else to invite new members for you because you can't at the moment, right? Yeah. Right now, you, there's very little chance that users will learn about that, basically. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, what if there was a separate path? And Doug, I'm thinking of you here. Is there a way for us to just update the settings in the back end to just run a test and open it up and not even notify people? You could definitely open it up. How, what if group owners don't want their lower privileged users to have this ability? Yeah, this is something I thought about if we ever decide to actually go and build this thing, we should have like a setting somewhere where we would possibly even default to this setting that says don't allow non-owners and non-maintainers to invite yeah. new members. I'd be very wary of, of just toggling this and not giving admins a notice, but also an ability to toggle it off. Because I can imagine very real situations where people don't want reporters, say, to be able to invite anyone to a group. Um, yeah. Because reporters might be loose affiliated people, non-organizational people, like mm -hmm. just people you do not want to have that power. Yeah. So this exactly. is where you'd, you'd have to work into a, an approval process on, on, on members joining or something like that or inviting. 
Yeah, it would never be without an approval. I, that's not how I imagine it, right? The, the owner would need to approve it. That's why I find this idea so interesting because I feel like we could test it with just, we could test it very easily a number of different ways. One would be to do it the very conservative way, which is what the path that Matei is going down. And then there's a more aggressive way to just see if, like what does, like what's the, what of the lower permissions that are provided, who are the people who invite the most users? That, that would be really interesting to me. I um, think you should be able to get your data from that invite members initial click. And if they're of the lower levels, then mm -hmm. it might be worth it to work in the approval process and whole thing to allow them to at least uh, trigger the or, process. So, sorry, I'm spending too much time on this one. What if we just did it for, for free for free users just to see the behavior is that an option i think it still raises the same issues of permissioning yeah yeah and i, I like the idea general it doesn't sound like a small scrappy experiment it sounds kind of involved you know what jeff you're right. <laughs> like it's worth doing, just maybe not in the context of like, can we knock it out in a week or two? Thank you for bringing me back to reality. Um, yes, you're right. But man, is it interesting. Um, okay, on to the next one. So what if we were to message one member groups to invite more members? Um, and do you think we could try this? If we can't do it with segmentation through our email marketing, um, through marketing ops, do you think it would be good to do this within the in-app messaging tool? So we can do this with email. I actually know exactly how we could do this. I mean, marketing probably has their own way, but like I could literally do this with a user poll and Qualtrics. Not that I'm saying we should, but it, I know how it would be definitely possible. This okay. is not going to be possible within that messaging. We do not have these kind of targeting abilities within that messaging. Okay. Don't, aren't we already uh, covering part of this with, um, with the banner that uh, Jackie is adding uh, on the one member groups? Currently? Yes, we are. But I want more. <laughs> is that okay? Is it okay for me would to that, be just a little... Cover, would that cover the in-app messaging though? Or what, what did you have? What does the in-app messaging mean? It's uh, broadcast messages. Yeah, so in the app. Right now is only able to be targeted via URL. There's no sort of user-based targeting available or group-based targeting. Yeah, cool. All right, so it sounds like yes, with email, not in-app. And Jeff, it sounds like you've got a pretty good handle on some of this stuff, so I'll probably bug you about it a little bit. I mean, marketing um, should probably do it because I'm sort of using a tool that's not meant to send pure marketing emails to do so. But I just, I like, I can connect the dots and I know that like, I know how to pull this data from the warehouse. I know how to generate a list of users and then we could send an email to those list of users. So like, I think yeah. we have all the steps we need. Yeah, okay. All right, well, I'll probably consult you a little bit on it. Um, the next two are based on size. So size of button, size of link text. I think these two are similar to the colors of the buttons. Mm -hmm. We could do it in theory, but again, we're limited. We, we do have two sizes of buttons and it's a smaller size and the default size. So we, we rarely even use the small size. So I don't think there's much to experiment there. And link text, we do have different text sizes. Maybe we could experiment with that. Yeah, I'd say if we have good reason to, we could change things outside of the design system and we could update the design system with those variations. But obviously, you know, we don't want to be tacky either. So yeah. it's better. Yeah. And we, well, could, we could have um, an additional large size, right, for buttons. Who knows what we could need them for? Yeah. I think you're right though, because it is inside of the app. It, they're not really like on landing pages, unless of course it was an empty state that we were looking at. But when you think of like the, 
the pages that get iterated on with these huge buttons and they are, they do tend to be tacky and they're typically, you know, one, one to two sentences that typically run on to one another. And then there's such as like a big, huge button for people. It's the only thing that they can do on the page. So of course it converts well. Right. Um, but that we're actually talking about something totally different. So, all right, I just, I'll tag both of those as maybe, um, and we can revisit them. I like your comment though, Jackie, about testing some of these things and basically iterating on the design system. Like that's yeah, if we break something in the design system for an experiment, I think it's fine to do that. And then if it works, we can talk about putting it in. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, so the next one I've got here is, we're, we're doing okay on time. We've got to keep moving quickly, so I'm, I'm proud of us. Um, add an invite, um, add an invite member CTA on features that add the most value when users uh, when used in collaborations with MR pipeline, value stream management, et cetera. Uh, I think we kind of covered this one with the first one, this one and the next two as well. It's just positioning of the CTA, whether it's a button or a link. Uh, and here, what I meant was empty states of these mm -hmm. features. Yes, I think these are pretty simple to do too. Yeah. Because really it's just um it's the real estate that we're targeting rather than the actual tactic. Um, yeah. Okay. But we all we're all good there, right? I think these three are pretty straightforward. All right, next one is um add an option to import users via CSV. Could use the use this to measure the interest for um, for the future before we decide to build it or not. Uh, does anybody, Doug? Do you know how feasible this would be from a back end perspective um, with importer functionalities? Uh, importing them from a CSV. Yeah, it's, it's feasible, um, but not. I wouldn't call it low effort or quick. So would you say that it's outside of a two week window? Um, maybe, I, it's, a, it's too much of an unknown for me to. All right, so I'm just gonna say maybe bigger. Two Could weeks. we in this case do something similar as we're currently with that model where we just tell them that it's not ready yet, but we're working on it and we just measure the interest in the future. This mean, seems a little like a different situation because like with invite members, like we have an invite members functionality, they just don't have access to it. This is something that doesn't exist. And so we're populating the UI with something that explicitly doesn't exist, which I don't love. And from like a user sentiment perspective, I might be worried about like, if we start down this road of like, we added a new thing, like surprise, it's not real. Um, like that. Yeah, like I, I get it for invite members because we're it's we're making a, a shift in how a, an existing feature works. And this to me isn't the same. And it's a behavior. This is more of a, this is basically like a net new function. I don't know. What yeah, I would get really frustrated if I was like, oh cool, I can invite people via CSV. It's like, surprise, no you can't. Um, especially if we started doing this like regularly, I could see that like being a real, negative sentiment driver but can't that's true yeah but how could we validate this without building it yeah because it seems like a big effort right and if we build it and then they don't use it it's it's a waste of time user research <laughs> um, i do see it being a, a, a really good thing though to do um, I mean, you can think of like multiple corporations that have lists of users. They don't want to click a button every time, give them a mass import functionality. Yeah. I mean, I think in general, we could investigate because like how I've seen people do it is like, you're not necessarily inviting users in the conceptual sense. You have some sort of auth provider, whether it's Active Directory or LDAP or whatever, and you're almost connecting the two in many cases. So like there's that. So yeah, I think this is maybe worthy of wider study because 
like maybe CSV is the right way to do it. Maybe like I think about like a lot of survey tools give you like a bulk answer functionality where they just give you a huge text input and it's basically one answer per line and you just paste in like, you know, eight lines of answers and then they become individual answers. Like that could be something that we could explore. I think there's like a lot of possibilities here and I think it's worth doing. I think we just need to better understand the problem. Okay. We'll give it a yes and explore it a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm going to write up issues for all of the, all the ones that end up with the S and even some of the ones that just take a, that are bigger than the bread box we're trying to fill right now. All right. So next one is add the invite members option to the quick menu, which is the plus icon. I think that's, yeah, I think, yeah, that's an easy one. We kind of already said that we should try these experiments. Mm -hmm. Um, Ask new users to invite members during sign up in an existing issue. Oh, oh, this is the existing issue. Yeah, that's an existing issue that conversion originally wanted to work on, but it doesn't look like they're planning on working on it anytime soon. Let's see how big this is. So hypothesis, we believe that users will be more likely to see value in GitLab and eventually upgrade the invite colleagues to the platform. However, we believe the new users today may find it challenging to figure out how we actually invite a colleague. And we're talking about, I wonder where we're talking about doing this. During the actual sign up, so you. Oh, during the sign up name. flow. So, yeah, the, yeah, so yeah. the new user experience, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, this isn't small. For whatever reason, whatever I see uh, wireframes that have more than more than two wires, I I'm like, oh wow, like, we have to really we have to really think about this. <laughs> I better go get a cup of coffee. Um, so we'll just say no for this um, for this, but we will um, we should pick it up. Yeah, if conversion won't pick it up, I think we should eventually. Yeah. All right, and but last one for invite members variations on the members page make the UI more appealing visually, maybe less, um, maybe less form, more people, more CTA. I think we should hold off on this because there's that project that they have to convert that a lot of that page to view right now. And we don't want to get mixed in the middle of that. We want to wait until they're probably done with that and then go after something like this. And we're also waiting for that um, invite a member model, right? That we started working on. I'm not sure if we completed that. Yeah, I think Jackie has that in progress right now. She's just looking for a trigger. It's in the works. It's going to be off. I'm s stoked about that one. Um, all right. All right, let's shift gears. So now we're, let's hit the reset button. So we're not thinking about inviting members anymore. Now we're going to shift gears to focus area of upgrading customers. So a little context, a little context shifting going on here. Uh, midstream, I think we're all capable of doing it. The first one for, for upgrading customers is to um, is the link placement for upgrading customers. We could simply add an upgrade link throughout the UI and see which one gets the most clicks. Same theme as, as uh, invite members, uh, but I think it's just a little bit different, um, different tactic, different behavior that we're targeting. And I think it's feasible, but I, what do you all think? When you say upgrading customers, you mean trying to encourage owners or whoever is associated with a subscription to upgrade that subscription? Exactly. And right now there, I want to say there aren't any links, but there are very, there's less, I would say that there's less than five places where you can do it. 
in the UI. Are we thinking that, this is something to do on SaaS? Yeah, we would want to. We would want to can't experiment it. on self-managed. Why am I? Why am I even asking? It's but we have to. So forget about that. Like we'll we got to figure that out. And I'm, I'm quite frankly, I'm like exhausted thinking about it because that's where the majority of our business is, and we need to figure it out. So even if it's something that we just test and we look at the numbers in aggregate, then we just have to be okay with it. Um, yeah. Sorry, I don't want to get all. Um, but yeah, uh, so I think I think this one's feasible. Doug, Matei, do you feel like this is something that we could do quickly? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, upgrade link destination. So we could test the destination of the upgrade links and see which one has the highest conversion. Um, this one, so it's similar to the one that I wrote above it. Um, this one being, so Jeff, to your point, like self-managed and SaaS is very different from an upgrade flow perspective. And I feel like the documentation that we're linking people to is different. So like the destinations of those links and of those buttons, I feel like we could test. And I bet you they're gonna be different. We'll see higher conversion on, on self-managed for, for different destinations. Um, good example would be uh, the subscriptions page, the upgrade subscription page um, in, in the um, in the docs um, versus on SaaS, just dro dropping them right into the customer portal. So like just deep linking them right into it. Um, so I I like that, and I don't want to be like the party pooper, but like I feel like testing anything on self managed does not fit into this idea of like quick and easy. Yes, I agree. Um, I think we should probably. Scope to SAS for, for now for this exercise. Yeah, and thanks for bringing me back to reality too. I do. Um, I just get excited about this stuff. I'm a kind of passionate about growth, and I get excited easily. Um, all right. The, the next idea is to message users who get downgraded um, after a trial to upgrade. Yeah, this is similar to the one I was speaking to earlier. Um, like, as long as this information is in the data warehouse, we can pull a list of users. Um, the one thing that I kind of forgot last time that we're going to need to make sure we consider, because normally for my purposes, I don't have to pay attention to it, is the marketing opt-in. Um, so we would need to scrub this against the marketing opt-in, because this would be marketing communication. Um, and that is something that involves Marketo. So that adds a wrinkle. But in theory, we should be able to give marketing a list of users and say, send this email to everyone on this list who's opted into marketing communication. Got it. Um, empty states for features in higher tiers. So we have empty states for features, but we don't show features in the sidebar that are not in the current tier of that user. Interesting. Um, so could we test showing some, some of them or just start with one, see what happens? And instead of the default CTA, could it be an upgrade CTA? So Mateo, let me just make sure I understand. So we have empty states for features but we don't necessarily have, we're not linking out to anything from, from the UI today that then explains the next tiers up. Is that what? Yeah, so in, in, if you're on bonds, in the sidebar, you won't see any links to the security stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if you are on the, on, I don't, know, I don't know, is it gold? I don't know which one it is where you actually get security features. But if, if you're on gold and you have the security features, but you haven't set up anything, go there and you have an empty state. I think we have an existing issue for this actually. I do too. And I, and I get this and I, um, I also think that there, I don't think, I know that we have it written down in our, in our handbook about, locked features. Um, 
But instead of making them feel like they're locked or that there are artificial limits, we could basically educate people, right? Yeah, yeah. So I really like this idea because I actually ran into this like a month ago and I was trying to find roadmaps on my personal plan and I didn't, I was on, I'm on free. And so obviously it didn't show me roadmaps and I like went mad for like 10 minutes trying to find it. Um, I do want to call out that we probably want to circulate this with the wider group because isn't there an initiative to actually show fewer things in the left nav and, and try to make the left, less left nav less complex and full of stuff? Yeah, there's that. And there's always the balance issue, right? How, how can you balance the amounts in that particular sidebar? Because we know it's quite dense already. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we could run an experiment or two, but if, if it turns out to be successful, I think we would need to have a logic behind it and say these behaviors tell us that these users or this team of users would probably benefit from this feature. And that's when we would show that CTA. I mean, I think, we yeah, long term, I mean, one, one way I could see we do it is we give admins and group owners the ability to sort of toggle like, show features not available on my plan. And so if they, if they don't want this, they could, could, the same way they can toggle off for a given project or group individual features. Like if you don't want your project to have CI, you can just toggle CI off and it'll take it out of the nav. So yeah. similar to that, I think it does have a benefit because I think like right now, people are never going to know that, that we have features that are not on their plan unless they're already somehow conscious of them. Like if conceptually you're interested in the idea of roadmaps, our UI does not tell you in any way that we have roadmaps. You have to somehow discover that on your own and then you have to read about it in the docs. And like, you're not even necessarily gonna see a screenshot of it. Like you're gonna like, hear a description of what roadmaps is. And so I think like, in terms of this idea of people upgrading because they have feature needs, we could do a lot in the UI to just help them understand, yes, roadmaps, for instance, are a thing we have and show something on that empty state page of like, and here's what you would get, here's how they work, so on and so forth. Um, and that to me is, is valuable. Like I would want that. Like if I were actually needing roadmaps for something other than like my silly personal projects, like I would probably upgrade to get that. But right now we just make that discovery really challenging. You know, it's, yeah. yeah, so I think it is, I think it's feasible. And I think there's a couple of different ways that we could do it. And I'm jumping to problem solution in my mind already, but even if it was just a small little tool tip that sits over the, the leading feature of a stage. And then it shows the features that are associated to that tier and then the other features that are available. I mean, there's so many different ways that we could, we could experiment with that one. Okay, so that one's, that's a good one. We um, should also give the, make sure we give the option to turn that off. Yeah. I like a user call out. But why would, why would we want them to shut it off? Well, I, as a user, I'd be like, I, I, I had a nice succinct uh, menu. Now I have all these things I can't even, use that are yeah. fluttering. Yeah, no, it's, there's a nav, lot there. Nav complexity is a big driver of negative sentiment on our SUS and our MPS surveys and has been for a while. Yeah, it was the top things that were called out. All right, we have um, 15 minutes to knock out these, the remaining pieces. Um, I think we can do it. So the next one is to send an email campaign to companies with X team members who aren't on the free plan and are getting close to renewal. I think that's an easy one, right? We could do that one. Um, I feel like this is another one that is similar answers here for these two size and text, size of upgrade button, size of upgrade link text. Um, short videos of paid features. If we have the videos, yes. So I think one thing I just wanna call it, we wanna maybe like time box this, cause right now we have a, a nurture stream email that has a video link in it. And that video is approaching two years old. Um, 
And if you watch it, it shows a version of GitLab that does not look like what you see today. And so I think we just need to be mindful that like that video or that email or whatever is going to have a shelf life. I just jotted 12 months old, so it would jog our memory when we're writing this up. Uh, the next one is to experiment with different messaging, wording around upgrading, perhaps in the empty states. I feel like the, the empty state pages are a, a great place for us to iterate with copy and designs. So I'm going to say yes. Is that something that, Doug, is there anything from an engineering perspective that, that would jam us up there? Not that I can think of. Yeah. I know the members page is a, the invite members page is a different, it's kind of like its own thing because it's being converted to view, but I think those empty states are very simple to update. Um, eliminate or move text on the select group page in the customer's portal. I think I added this one and it's because I was looking at that page where you're, you're going through the checkout and you have to select a group and it's confusing. And there's a whole bunch of text at the top to tell you how to do it. Um, but yeah, and I think also we have to talk to Kevin because I sort of remember that there was a reason that that was designed that way. But it's just like, if you look at it, it's like three paragraphs of text. Very yeah. heavy. Okay. Um, I have to look at it again, but I, I remember, I. I vaguely remember it. I haven't been in the customer's portal in a, specifically on that page in a, in a while. Um, the next one is move to, move to top of page and or um, to proceed to the checkout button. What is this one? Let me add this link. Um, see if that link should get you to the flow, the upgrade flow in Figma. And if you zoom in and then to the top middle where you see the customer portal and it has that heading um, the, it's got the purple nav. I think it's going to be go keep scrolling a little bit right. So this is what I'm talking about, where you've you know you've kind of decided to upgrade and you're checking out, but are people stopping here because of any of this big text? Um, is there anything that we can edit or update or change or experiment with in this flow? And I guess it would be increasing, not necessarily the people who click or decide to upgrade, but the people who finish and get through the entire checkout process. Looking at this now, I see there's a lot of instructions on this page. Maybe we could review that as well as part of this because on certain screen sizes, I would assume you need to scroll down to even get to the main CTA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not only that, but like, there's this, all this text about picking a group or a personal plan, what to do, and it's far away from that drop down where you are actually even doing that. Yeah. So do people understand what's happening here? I, I don't. I, I... <laughs> it's a lot of cognitive load here. Yeah. yeah. I'm very confused actually now that I'm reading this because it's, it's kind of out of context too because I don't know where I'm coming from. Sign in. Literally from the sign in. Emily presented a, a new design for that previous page. Is that something we're moving forward with? That was her, her work was really good. I think that's okay. next on the list, actually. I think, yeah, I think I added it to this list. 
Yeah, I definitely think we should do that. A, because she's already done it. And B, it's really, it, it's a huge improvement. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just to get us back on, on the prioritization or the feasibility track, we've got, um, I think, yes, we can update the text on that page. That's, that's a no brainer. And I think move, move to the top of the page. The proceed checkout. Now I understand what you're saying here. So like the, the actual, the, the CTA, the main behavior that we want them to complete is buried on the page under confusing copy. Uh, well, maybe the copy isn't confusing. It's just elongated copy. Um, I mean, an experiment might be just to swap it and put the copy at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. And I think that's a pretty easy one for us to do. All right. Two more to go. Uh, we've got small text or visual changes on how we display the different plans. That's pretty straightforward, I think. We can definitely do that. And then display a badge with a plan name somewhere in the app. I love this idea. And one of the things I was, I read it the other day and I was just looking through the UI and there's nothing that tells our customers visually that like we value them and they value our product. Right. And something like a badge could do that or some sort of, yeah, we could put that like maybe in the nav bar even by the by our logo. It or could something. be. We could. I mean, right in the nav, ultimate, right? I mean, I, we would have to figure out what what that means as it relates to uh, personal plans versus group plans and how we how we negotiate that. But I think that's that's an easy one. That yeah. Yeah. How would that work if it was in the nav? Because like, isn't your plan dictated by literally where you are in yeah. GitLab? Like you could be in a project with plan A and a group with plan B. So would it change as you navigated? Yeah. And we would have to figure that out. Um, kind of all the more reason to tell people that too, right? It, exactly. Because that's I like when you watch all of Catherine's videos and the video that Jeff did about the sus and usability from a nav perspective, it's, People just get lost in it. They don't know where they are, whether they're in groups or they're on their, their name, like their personal namespace um, or in their projects. It's, yeah. Um, I don't know if you saw this, but I think the conversion team was doing something where they were going to tell people when they were on a trial, because we don't do that either. And so we might build off of that, depending yeah, that on would, that design is. Like that would be, be awesome. Um, At my last job, we had a top bar similar to the one we have at GitLab, and we were a trial-based product. And in the top bar, from the moment you started a trial, we had an item that said X days left in your trial, which and it was very effective. It, it yes, it was maybe a bit too large than it, larger than it needed to be, but it worked. It was a, a tenth of the page at the top, and it was like like the hello bar in your face, light boxed. We didn't have a search in top nav, so it took up on desktop like a third of the of the top bar, um, and it was centered. So it was it was prominent. Cool. All right. Well, we did it. We got through our list. I think we have a good, I'm going to clean this list up. Um, I'll move all the ones that we said yes to, to the top. There's only a handful that we said that were hard no's, but there were a bunch that were actually like, we should work on these. They're just bigger pieces of work. So I don't want to lose the work. Um, I'll document them. I'll create issues uh, and I'll just put them in the backlog for, for further work um, when we can get to them. I think the next step after I do this is to clean up the list, get them in, get them organized a bit more. And then we can, what I'll do is I'll identify whether or not the data exists for us to, to get some insights about these before we move forward, just so that way we can understand what the reach and the impact would be. And then I also think it would be helpful to just have one more session to talk about effort once they're scoped a little bit further. Um, we could say, okay, so, for this experiment, we want to do these things. 
um, and then basically consult with Phil and Doug and Jack and ask to, hey, like, what is this going to take from an engineering perspective? Um, I think through the through the next couple iterations on this, I'm going to have to work really closely with um, with with the our UX counterparts. So Jackie, Jeff, Matei, I, I'll probably lean on you a little bit. Doug, there's only I only saw a handful in here that are really like straight engineering uh, opportunities. But um, if anything else jump out, I'll I'll ping you off. Um, so just keep an eye out. You'll probably see a follow a couple follow on issues from me. Um, I will build an epic for these and then I'll just create individual issues for all of them, except for the ones that we said no. Um, and then I'll get them tagged and we can review it again. Any final, any final words? Thanks for doing this. It was fun. Yeah. yeah hopefully, hopefully it was helpful and a good use of our time. I, um, I don't think we've, I don't think anybody's on the, any team on the growth team has been able to sit down and vet through, vet 30 ideas quickly like we just did. So um, I'm excited. I was going to say, I, I told the UX team this in our Slack channel, but I think that the user flows that, that we did have mm -hmm. been really helpful actually, because I looked at those user flows while I was doing this exercise and it's really nice to have it all in one place and not have to worry about like going into the app and um, getting things to look the way you need them to look. You just look at the user flows and, and it drives lots of ideas. So <laughs> might want to do that for some of the other, other areas too. Yeah, this is great. Well, thank you all for, for showing up and, and contributing. Really appreciate it. Right. See ya. Bye.